So welcome to Civilization 5, and for this first game that I'm going to be showing you, we're going to be playing as India, um, just because they have sort of a passive ability so we can ignore one of the mechanics in the game until the second game that I'm going to show you. And we'll be playing on the Pangaea, which is basically one big continent that all the players start on. We'll be going with standard size, which has eight civs in it, so that's seven AI compo um, opponents I'm going to be facing. We're going to be playing on Prince difficulty, since that's the normal difficulty. The higher the difficulty, the more the computer cheats to get an advantage, and we'll see that later on. And playing the game on standard pace. I personally prefer longer games, but we're going to be going with standard, just so that uh, we get used to it. To show you basically what's going to be happening, the way that it intends itself to be played. Greetings, President Gandhi, great salt leader of India. You are the ruler of one of the oldest countries in the world, with history stretching back almost 10,000 years. A spiritual country, India is the birthplace of three of the world's great religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. It is a passionate land of music and color, and it is a land of great wealth and grinding poverty. For centuries, India was divided into kingdoms who fought constantly with each other and against outside invaders. In the 12th century AD, India was conquered by Muslim Turks. In the early 17th century, the English arrived, and through a combination of shrewd diplomacy and technological superiority, they conquered your fragmented country. England remained in power for some two centuries until driven out by a rising wave of Indian nationalism peaceful rebellion unlike any before seen in history. Gandhi, your people look to you to lead India to even greater heights of glory. Can you help your people realize their great potential to once again become the world center of arts, culture, and religion? Can you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? So our two specials that we get as India are the War Elephant, which is an upgrade to a Horse Archer, and a Moogle Fort, which we won't see for a while, but I'll talk about it when we get to it. So before we do anything, because I forgot to change it originally, let's quickly go and take off uh, quick turns. Because I want to share the game to begin with. So, this is our settler. This is where we're going to make our first city, and we can move this guy if we wanted to. Um, we're not actually within two towers of this mountain, so that's a bit nasty, but at the same time, the game wants to start us here, so we'll probably just go here. These are our warriors, and to begin with, we're just going to go and search around for them. And we're actually next to a uh, desert there, but we'll just found our city here, because the game tells us to at the moment. We'll go on more about uh, personal choices later on. At the moment, this is supposed to just be showing you what we're going to be doing in the game, the way that the game intends itself to be played. So now that uh, we've built our city, we get to look at our tech tree. This is the entirety of the game. By the time we reach here at the information era, this will be where we finish the game if we haven't already. But you see it's going to take us over 2,000 turns to reach that at our current science gain. That will obviously get less as time goes on. To begin with, we want to actually go to writing because that will allow us to get more science, which means that all of these will be a lot quicker to get from then on. So we're going to start with pottery, which will allow us to build a granary to increase food, and a shrine to increase faith. And now that we've built our city, we can also make our first structure. Since we're on a Pangaea, and um, there's going to be eight players, it's quite big, we want to make a scout first, so that they can help us explore the land. So that's all we can do this turn, now we're going to go to the next turn. This is a turn-based game, so that's naturally going to be how we play it. So these guys can move twice, but if we go here, we wouldn't actually be able to move twice because we're crossing a river, and that takes both of our movement. So we're just going to go there first, just to make sure there wasn't anything past this hill. Because we may as well get the most movement out of these guys as we can. So at this point in the game, the game's going to be nice and gentle. We're very unlikely to get a war this early, even on the hardest difficulty setting. You would at least have to wait a short while until the computer has an army first. So we're just going to make this scout, 
and then we're going to go and search around the map and then we'll build some actual structures. So as a whole this is a very relaxing uh, game that basically just kind of goes slow for the most part until you probably enter a war or later into the game when the game can get a bit, bit more hectic especially on the harder difficulties but we won't be seeing that as I said because we're only playing on the easiest difficulty at the moment. Not easiest rather, the normal difficulty. So this is Mabonza Congo. We've gained 30 gold for meeting them. That means that we're the first players to actually meet these guys. So this is a city-state. These aren't actual players. These are computers as well. Uh, not computers as in the AI played ones. These exist to give us um, benefits and to give us quests and the like. We can also attack them, but we're playing as Gandhi, so obviously we're not going to go to war against anyone. So these guys are militaristic, if we befriend these people they will give us troops, their personality is hostile, that means our relationship with them will dwindle a lot quicker than everyone else. But they do have gems, and if we befriend them we can get gems. And that will give us happiness, and like I said we're playing as Gandhi so we can actually completely ignore happiness at the moment. We'll talk about that when we play a liberty game, which uh, I'll be doing next just to make sure that we spice things up a little bit. So as you see here, this green bar is about to fill. That means that we've almost um, got a second um, citizen in here. If we check our citizen management, we'll see that our citizens are currently working on this tile here. Once it grows, they can work on a second tile. And each tile that gets worked will give us bonuses. So we're getting two food, which increases the production. And we are also gaining uh, thingy, two gold per turn at the moment. I just wanted to make sure there was nothing there. We are being disliked because we're standing inside this city-state's territory, but we don't really care to be honest because they're hostile anyway so our relationship with, with them would dwindle very quickly. So these scouts are unlike the warriors. These move two spaces no matter what. I just moved through a forest then. If we did that with the warriors we would have had to take two turns to do that. Because as you see here this forest and hill is going to take both of our turns to cross it. This here is some ancient ruins. This will give us a benefit if we stand on it. And of course, the first player to take this is the one who takes it, and that's why we want to scout so that we can get as many of these as possible. Oh! Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it? What makest thou? That is really nasty. We should have waited one more turn before we got that, because we just wasted 13 potential turns on great writing then. Well, that was obnoxious. Ah well, that's the way the game goes. I'm not against save scumming myself, so I would go back on an auto save and stop myself doing that if I was playing this alone, but since I'm recording and I'm not going to do that. We're going to take the punches that the game gives us because that's how you're supposed to play the game. And here's some more ancient ruins. So if we didn't make these scouts, we probably wouldn't have got either of those. That obviously wasn't a big deal, but this one may be better. And that's why it could be worth getting them. And there's some more ancient ruins down here. We are playing on uh, Pangea, as I said at the moment, so we're expecting all seven of these computers to actually meet us at some point soon. We gained culture. That's very helpful. As you see up here, we gain one culture per turn, and we just got enough to get our first social policy. We'll be getting this next turn now, because we got that nice ruin. These ruins are very handy to pick up. Now then, we should probably check up here first. Make sure we're not going to be missing anything in our own territory. And here we have some barbarians. Barbarian brutes will attack us. So here's a barbarian nest. This will continually uh, build barbarians to come and fight us until we destroy it. So our warriors may have to do that soon. The computer, for the most part, will not tell warriors to um, will not tell the barbarians to attack us. Like we just ignored us then. If we, were, if we had somebody a lot weaker, they would attack us, more than likely. So here, we get our first social policy. This is basically how you want to play the game. Tradition is all about making big cities. Really big cities, lots of population. Liberty is about making lots and lots of cities, loads of them and littering the map with them. Honour is about going to war. And piety is about burning a religion. We'll talk about the others when we get... Actually no, I may as well talk about them now. 
uh, these ones are currently locked off until we advance more into the game. Patronage will allow us to better use of the city-states, like we just met one of them already. On that note, actually, we should go and meet this other city-state that I can see on the map soon. I accidentally missed that because I wasn't paying attention. Rationalism will allow us to gain more science so we can discover more technologies. Exploration is all about naval cities, so cities on the coast, which we don't have one yet, so we can ignore that. Commerce is about making lots of money. And aesthetics is about tourism and culture gain. Both of those two things will be going on about later. Since we're playing as Gandhi, we want tradition. Taking one point in tradition will give us three extra culture per turn. Now we're going to get the next social policy in only six turns time instead of about 30. And then we'll be able to go further into that tree and I'll talk about it as it goes on. So at the moment I passed up this city-state here, we want to actually go meet them. Because uh, we can get an extra bonus of course if we go and talk to them. And here are some ruins right next to our home, it's a good thing we told our guys to come back. So one of those ruins actually gave us extra population, so we got a nice head start on Delhi at the moment. Okay, this is a maritime state. If we befriend them, we'll get extra food for our capital. There, even though they are hostile, that will be a good one to befriend. Oh, and we got probably one of the best ruins we could ever get in this game. And that is an upgrade to our troops when we get it with a scout. Because these scouts are going to become outdated sooner or later, but they've turned into archers now. They're archers who can move like a scout moves. That's very good. So yeah, we haven't met anyone yet. This is actually kind of cool. This is a big map. Like I said, this is a standard map. It's really big. We haven't met a single one of the seven computers yet. The small map, which is only six players, is kind of what I expect the game really should be played as. But we'll meet them sooner or later if we carry on moving. Okay, let's just... I just want to completely explore the map to make sure that there wasn't going to be something else here. Or like a ancient ruin on that forest tile. So we could actually do with getting ourselves more than likely, because we could start building on some faith at the moment. We've got five turns until writing comes. If we uh, sacrifice some food temporarily, we can get some extra production here. Our city isn't going to grow as quickly. But we'll be able to make a shrine with two less turns on it, which means that we can get a head start on this building here. The Great Library, and we're going to be doing that soon. We could also make a worker at the moment, but we don't actually have the technology to use our worker properly. And here's another city-state. Oh, we didn't actually talk to Singapore. Okay, this is also this is a mercantile state. These guys will give us happiness if we befriend them. And they're irrational. That means that they're going to give us weird quests a lot of the time, which we're probably not going to solve. I won't really talk about the quests so much for a city-state until we do... Um, something relating with city-states more, which is going to be a future game. So we're going to continue going down the tradition tree. Here we have a choice between either 15% production towards building wonders, which the Great Library is going to be one, or we can get this kind of useless perk that helps with defending our city, which we won't need to use for a while, but we do need to get it to get this one later, which will give us an extra building. It won't be too helpful at the moment, because we, we already have the building it's going to give us in the one city we have. But then it will give us these two beautiful ones where we'll get extra growth or extra money. To begin with though, we're going to get a wonder production because we want to try and build this great library soon. 15 gold! That means that we're near, uh, we are near uh, one of the computer players now and we're going to be meeting them soon. Then we can see who we're actually allied with. Or rather who we're going to be playing against. Because we're going to be looking to make allies of everyone, because we're playing as Gandhi, we don't want to actually get into warfare. So these warriors, sooner or later, are going to meet whoever it was who just met that city-state. Uh, 
And now we're getting attacked by warrior, uh, by some barbarians. That's quite annoying. Oh well. They won't actually be able to attack us yet. If we had some workers out, we would need to be worried about them or if we upgraded tiles because barbarians can burn tiles. But at the moment, since nothing's upgraded, these guys are just going to be annoying more than anything. We can ignore them for the moment. So we're going to carry on making the shrine first because we want to get some faith going. He who destroys a good book kills reason itself. Okay, and we just got writing, so now we're going to be able to increase our gain of uh, science. So now we should start working on the next thing. For Gandhi, this building here is going to be very nice, the Temple of Artemis. So we may actually look to be getting that next. So let's go down there. It will also allow us to get some uh, archers, but like I said with Gandhi, we're not really going to use them other than for defence. And since this barbarian is within two tiles range, our city can now attack it. As you can see here, this red line is how far out our city can attack. They're close enough to be hit. So that will serve them right for trying to attack us. And in one turn, we're going to be making our shrine. Cities, like military units, can defend against attackers. Thanks, mate. I always keep that one up. Um, you can tell them to stop giving you advice, but that's an always a nice one just to make sure that you're aware that someone's nearby you. So now we can start building the Great Library. So this is called a Wonder, and if you've played any of these types of games, uh, you'll know that Wonders, only one person is allowed to build these. So if I build this Wonder, none of these seven computer players can build it. But if they build it, then I can't build it. So this is actually going to be a race, if I click this. As you can see there, we're going to get one free technology, that's nice. And we get a free library, which means we don't have to build one. And we also gain some extra science, culture, and a great scientist point for it. We'll talk about the great scientist point soon. And basically put, if we can make this, we're going to be really in a good position. So we're going to start trying for it. I'll keep the, uh, I'll put the quick movement on in a bit so that we don't have to keep seeing our guys running around. I'll keep it up for the first short while and then I'll change it off. Let's see, you can go there. So we still haven't spotted whoever it was who uh, met that city-state. Oh, but someone else has met Vatican City, which is a shame because, uh, if we met them first, we would have got 8 faith instead of 4 faith, which would have put us a lot closer to what we need. The Vatican City, I'll talk about this now actually, they're a religious one. Um, these different city-states all are the same each time you play the game. Obviously they've got different positions, but the Vatican City will always be a faith place. Singapore will always be a mercantile safe uh, place, stuff like that. Im Namen des großen deutschen Volkes heiße ich euch willkommen. Hello Germany. How are you doing guys? Vorwärts. Now Germany can't actually accept our embassy yet, that's a shame. They don't have the uh, writing like we have at the moment. Germany is a warmonger, so uh, we need to be a little bit careful with him. We're unlikely to be attacked unless we really have very little army or annoy people on this difficulty. But um, on the difficulties where the computer cheats and we have an advantage, they are quite likely to actually start uh, wars against us. So then we're going to be making this in 26 turns. Personally, 22 turns, that's nicer. Because we want to make the Great Library as soon as possible. Germany will not be able to beat us on it at all, because they don't even have writing yet, so they can't get and they can't even start making that wonder. But the other cities, uh, the other civs may have it. Well, those guys were foolish. Well, we found Germany. So, unless you play with um, a certain setting that gives you random personality traits, 
the computers will always be a specific personality. Like Germany will start wars with people, stuff like that. Um, India will avoid wars with people. Uh, the guys who like to trade will try to uh, to trade more than they will want to go to war, stuff like that. So you tend to know if you're going to end up getting in a war or not, depending on who's nearby you. So since Germany is our closest computer at the moment, they may want to go to war. So this happens every once in a while. This tells us that um, the most progressive people means the number of social policies. We've got two so far. Some other people are made three, so they're ahead of us in culture. And that's not good because we actually want culture in this game because uh, that's something that Gandhi does well at. And we've almost met our second uh, Civ. And I think I know who that is already, but I'm going to keep it a surprise for you. Unless, of course, you actually play this game, in which case, thanks for watching, because I'm not exactly the best player in the world. But, you know, it's always nice to have someone's view on it. And now we got ourselves a Pantheon. So this is going to be our religion for life, basically, unless we don't manage to make our religion. So we get to have this uh, positive perk forever unless it gets removed by someone else's religion. So as you can see there's a lot to pick from. I think I'm the only one with a Pantheon at the moment, so I'm the only um, so I get complete pick over what I want to get here. Extra culture from shrines, extra faith from tundra tiles, faith from desert tiles, some resources. We have uh, healing, faster growth. We have production. We have Goddess of Protection. Computers like to get this one. It basically means that you're harder to take your cities. It's not too useful though. Um, I usually avoid that. This one here, Monument of the Gods. 15% production building ancient and classical wonders. That will make sure we absolutely get the Great Library. But it's a bit of a waste unless you really want to make these wonders early on and you think you won't be able to get them. Uh, to be honest, usually I like to go for Monument of the Gods because a lot of these early game wonders are good to have. God King is always useful. It gets, it doesn't get enough love in my opinion. Um, it's only plus one to each of these yields, but at the very start of the game, this is a nice buff to your first city. It get, it gets outdated very quickly, but this is a positive buff to have. It basically means that I will be getting plus seven faith, uh, culture per turn. I'll double my faith per turn. And um, I'll be getting one extra gold, an extra production. Because Delhi at the moment actually has eight productions. This will give us nine production. But we don't really want to go for that at the moment because we don't really need it. I'd prefer to get something better. I'd actually be, be tempted to get 10% faster growth rate since we are Gandhi. And Gandhi does benefit from uh, having extra growth. And I think we'll actually do that. So it's kind of a useless perk, but at the same time, I like it. Now let's go meet our new friend. Ajisha Chukanchi, Yuka Mikani Pachakutik, Inka Kunapagapa. We are honored to meet you. Yep, so these are the Incans. Um, they questionably are warmongers, but also are sometimes peaceful. The uh, first match I had when I started to go against cheating computers, they went to war with me, so yeah. I'm not exactly pleased to have them on the same continent as me, but hey, we're playing on Pangaea, so everyone's going to be on the same continent as us. A half of the arrow had been feathered with one of the eagle's own plumes. We often give our enemies the means of our own destruction. Ooh. Ancient ruins that's quite no close to Germany, so they didn't come down here, which is lucky for us. Now then, honor is actually kind of useful to get. If we took this, um, we would be able to see the barbarian camps like this one here. They would always, they would appear on the map as soon as they spawn in somewhere where we've seen in this fog of war. Which is helpful, but we don't actually want it, because again, we're Gandhi, we don't really like warfare. So we're going to start going down tradition to get these two amazing perks later on. This is a useless one, like I said, and this is also going to be useless to start the game with, but, you know, it'll be good later. And we got to think about the long run when we play as Gandhi. If we get the wheel, we can make our war elephants. To start with, we want to get Calendar. Because as soon as we get uh, the Great Library built, which we should hopefully be able to get, 
We want to be uh, making ourselves... We want to be using the free tech to get philosophy over there. Now then, how much can we uh, produce if we take off for 17 turns? 20 turns, but it's still stagnant. All oh, right, because I need to make turn this guy off. Ah, well, I prefer to make that uh, first. We are limiting our uh, growth on Delhi, which is annoying, but it needs to happen. And we found a natural wonder. That's interesting. Barrage crater here. Since we discovered it, we gained two happiness permanently. And um, if we worked that tile, which a city-state currently has, we will be getting three... Uh, science per turn from it, which is very nice. Now, and hopefully a computer isn't going to land on this in the next turn, because our archers are just about to pick it up. We are pleased to meet you. Hello, Elizabeth. Uh, she's one of the two. Um, civilizations in this game that actually speak English. So it's kind of rare, rare that you actually see them uh, speaking a language that I understand because I'm an uncultured swine. And we got some maps which are kind of useless. I would have preferred to actually have something useful, but whatever game, that is literally the worst perk. My England is, um, where is England? The Spearmen, that was from this side, but clearly England isn't here. Maybe they're down here somewhere. And I just completely went past them. Now then, you can go down there and cross that river. Now we don't really need to talk to the uh, sieves so much unless we want to, because the computer's pretty good with um, getting them to talk to you. So if they want to trade, and they're able to trade, and we're able to trade, then they will tend to want to speak to us and make the trade offer. Obviously we can change the trade offer to suit us, but is a short here, but they will like talk to us first. So somebody has a lot of quarries because they just took that perk. Okay, so this is the bottom of the world at the moment. When it turns into tundra and then turns to ice, that means that um, you're at the bottom. That also means that we're currently at the top of the map, because here again there's tundra and then there's snow and up here is going to be ice, and you can't pass ice. I'm still very happy that we got some archers. Because I always hate getting rid of my scouts, and if you can turn a scout into an archer, it's just so nice, because you just get to keep your scouts for the entire game. Okay, no one's able to take that, so that's ours. So this ice here, you're not able to pass it no matter what you do. This is completely out of bounds area, so that is the end of the map. Now oh, then, where's that barbarian camp up here? The reason why we just uh, found out about this is because the city-state just asked us to go and kill it. As you can see here, we have a quest that wants to destroy a barbarian encampment. If we destroy that, we're going to gain influence with them, and then we'll become their friends, and eventually their allies. So let's just keep building the Great Library. Oh, that's a very near one to my home. And getting them as our friends would be very good, so we would actually really like to destroy this. And we get even more population. That's very nice. Our city is going to grow like mad. Uh, it's not worth starving for that, to be honest. We're only getting two extra turns out of it. I prefer not to uh, screw over our city. I'm still going to explore here, I just want to make sure that there wasn't anything on this tile, because I don't know if I was able to see that or not. There may be in a very sneakily hidden ancient ruin there.
So as I said, the start of the game is kind of nice and slow because even the cheating computer can't really go to war with you yet. Like, at the very earliest, I'd probably expect a war on the hardest difficulty, probably around turn 50, maybe. I don't think I've seen it before that, but, you know. I've never actually played on that difficulty myself, and I usually play on epic pace, so I'm not too used to it. It's more from when I've seen other people play it. Well, by other people I mean Smite. Like, I just watched him play it and I was like, you know what, it looks like a good game. And I started playing it myself and I'm like, yeah, it's a good game. Sydney is going to become our friends if we destroy this camp and it's right next to our archers. So we're actually going to go do that now. Because our archers, unlike the scouts, are going to be very good at killing those barbarianess. In fact, ranged units are always going to be the best. Es wäre in eurem Interesse, dass ihr dieses Angebot sorgfältig...